So there I was waiting for No Man's Sky to drop before doing this list, and it goes and gets delayed till August. But to be honest, that's only for the better because we can reflect back on all the games that have come out so far. From Ubisoft picking themselves up after years of half-baked Assassin's Creed to deliver The Division, the mind-bending, puzzle-happy delights of The Witness, gortastic exuberance of Doom and the Pixarian charm of Overwatch, the AAA scene is on fire right now, and not in that weird 2014 way. The momentum established from the trifecta of The Witcher 3, Fallout 4 and Metal Gear Solid 5 is showing no signs of slowing down. But with so much to hoover up and experience, can you truly say you've played the best games of the year so far? Let's find out. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are the 10 best video games of 2016 so far. At number 10, XCOM 2. Big budget reactionary warfare is all well and good, but for something a little more considered, you need XCOM. Both Enemy Unknown and Enemy Within are still masterclasses in how to provide tactically in-depth options for all manner of strategic gameplay, yet for the sequel, Firax has somehow managed to crank the dials up even further. Light elements of stealth can now aid you in getting the drop on foes, customization and modding of soldier abilities means your squad is more unique than ever, and across the board, performance has been cranked up, allowing you to fly through levels as fast as you can plan and execute. XCOM is the granddaddy of turn-based tactical combat, and thankfully, the formerly PC-only XCOM 2 will now I'll be getting a console release in September. At number 9, Firewatch. Firewatch may be the latest in the derisively labelled walking simulator genre, yet when the developers behind it are a super team of ex-Walking Dead and Clay Entertainment guys, bolstered by the art of Ollie Moss no less, you better believe it's one of the best. Playing as character Henry after he suffered an incredibly moving personal tragedy and moved to the Wyoming wilderness, Firewatch is a tale of isolation, friendship, and coping with life's inevitable hardships in some very relatable ways. To say more would ruin the surprise of what Firewatch is really about, but suffice to say, by the time the credits roll, you'll have experienced one of the most mature and thought-provoking narratives in quite some time. At number 8, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, Blood and Wine. Now normally, no, a game's DLC expansion wouldn't be added to a list dealing with titles that released outside of its own year, but have you seen Blood and Wine, The Witcher 3's final add-on? Not only does it spruce up the basic render rendering tech power in the game for a truly gorgeous looking environment, but the world itself is gigantic, rammed full of quests, both main and side to complete, alongside a bevy of new creatures, characters, weapons, collectibles, and so much more to drink in. Seriously, under any other studio, this would have just released as a sequel, its sheer size and scope dwarfing many other open world games completely. Geralt's final adventure is already outstanding, but with such copious fan and consumer service post-launch, CD Projekt Red deserve full commendation for all their efforts. At number 7, Fire Emblem Fates. Don't let its 16-bit sprites fool you. Fire Emblem is a refined, turn-based beast of a game. Its battles have a ludicrous amount of customizability within, and you'll play as a custom prince slash princess who's lived a sheltered life, only to find yourself torn between two kingdoms who both claim you as their own. The best part, though, is a crazy soap opera-style plot that spans permanent repercussions if you crank up the difficulty, yet it's still split across two completely different versions of the game named Birthright and Conquest. Whichever you buy denotes how the story is going to play out, and a final DLC pack revelation concludes both arcs. Fire Emblem is turn-based strategy gaming at its finest, and if you're in possession of a 3DS, check it out. In at number 6, Ratchet & Clank. The third-person platformer is making a comeback. At least, I sure hope it is. Because if Ratchet & Clank is anything to go by, we're in for one hell of a treat. Launched alongside a movie tie-in that sadly didn't do very well with audiences or critics, the game component sees Insomniac firing on all cylinders. Animation is sublime, the frame rate perfected as the studio have remade every aspect of their 2002 original. Ratchet plays way better than you expect, proving not only that Insomniac are one of the most talented studios around, but that the genre is truly immortal when it's done right. At number 5, Super Hot. It's been far, far too long since we saw a completely original idea thrown into the first-person shooter mix. Ender Super Hot, the game where time only moves when you do. It could have just been a daft gimmick, but in the moment when you can literally let off the analog sticks and watch time slow to a crawl, feels fantastic. Being in control of dancing around and under bullets, catching weapons in midair, Super Hot is each and every Matrix-inspired action scene ever composed, with you as both director and actor simultaneously. Its story may not be terribly long and is definitely a polarizing comment on where virtual reality gaming could be heading, but for its gameplay alone, Super Hot is truly something you need to check out for yourself. At number four, Overwatch. Every now and then you come across a franchise destined for the history books, and if there's one developer who solely owns the quill to fill those pages, it's Blizzard. Overwatch is a truly astonishing feat of game design, a smorgasbord of balanced characters and playstyles connoting all sorts of influences and genre tropes into one mightily addictive package. Like Call of Duty, try Soldier 76 with his run and gun style. Titanfall, Diva and her mech will sort you out. What about Far Cry? Hanzo's bow and arrow does nicely. Even outside these immediately accessible characters with their intertextual appeal, lie another 18 that are just a joy to watch and control. Oh, and it has a loot system which rewards you for consecutive matches. It's like some weird fever dream of explosions, sex appeal, and Disney characters. Three things that sound very weird together, yet fit better than any of us could ever have imagined. At number three, Dark Souls 3. The whole cinematic blockbuster thing is all well and good, but when you want a game that begs replayability, one you'll get through on a steady 60 hour playtime and simply know there's 10 times more content tucked away inside, you want something like Dark Souls 3. Another exemplary outing from the masters of hack and slash themselves, certain chunks of levels are tributes to the original, characters reprise specific roles or get fleshed out the more you explore, and the lore itself is a direct continuation of where Dark Souls 1 left off. Gameplay though, that's the good stuff. 
From Software have finally nailed the balance between not necessarily being too hard from the get-go, but ramping up accordingly after about an hour or so. While it might sound unnatural to enter any series on its third installment, Dark Souls 3 is the best entry point, also managing to miraculously do right by the fans that have stood by for half a decade. Number 2, Uncharted 4 A Thief's End It might not be the medium-shaking titan that The Last of Us was, but Uncharted does something nobody expected going in. It reframes the entire original trilogy by making Nathan Drake way more human. Where before we essentially treated Nate as an Indiana Jones-esque risk taker, now we're given a proper foundation to precisely why he does all of these things. A Thief's End concludes the series in landmark fashion, proving Naughty Dog are the finest and most learned developer working in gaming today. And at number one, Doom. All that said, sometimes you need a game to be a game, you know? None of this fancy cinematic posturing, no elaborate narrative, and certainly no quick time events. Id Software wrote the book on such a thing, and with their grand return to Doom some 12 years in the making, they've knocked it clean out the park and straight up to Mars. There's a number of truly innovative game mechanics to keep it all fresh. Out of ammo? Just whip out your chainsaw and carve through enemies to trigger some pickups. Likewise with health, executions restore it, encouraging you to mix up weapons and tactics on the fly. A technical powerhouse from top to bottom, take gore-soaked levels, very demon design, phenomenally powerful weapons, and pack it all in with extra dynamite. Doom is the resulting explosion and everything you'd expect from a true veteran of the industry. It's perfect. So that's what I think are the best video games of 2016 so far. Feel free to shout out in the comments if you think I'm wrong, you have something else you want to put at number one. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can find us on Facebook. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and I'll see you soon.